Hey guys, what's up? It's Danny, and in today's video, I'm gonna be going over the most basic terminology that you will be using when it comes to learning muscle anatomy, and that is origin, insertion, action, and innervation. If you already understand these basic terms, but you are still struggling with muscle anatomy, I actually made a video a while back ago which gives some tips on how to learn muscle anatomy and how to make muscle anatomy really easy to understand. I'm gonna put the video like up here, or it's gonna be linked here, wherever YouTube decides to put it. And I'll also leave the link down below in my description. Before I start, I do wanna give a huge shout out and thank you to ATS Study Buddy for providing this picture for today's video. ATS Study Buddy is the first online platform to study for the athletic training BOC exam. I remember when I was prepping for the BOC, I really didn't have an online resource. I had to use my notes or read books and it was really annoying. I really wish I had like an online learning platform like ATS Study Buddy. So if you are an athletic training student just like how I was, I highly suggest you check them out. Something really important that you have to know is that muscles attach to bone through a tendon. Therefore, the role of a tendon is to connect a muscle to a bone. Every muscle is gonna have a proximal tendon and a distal tendon. Knowing this as a basic foundation can really help you understand origin and insertion a lot easier. There are tons of different ways in which you can define origin and insertion, but I like to keep it really simple and just use the terms themselves. So the way I think of it is that origin is the origin of the muscle. It's where the muscle actually starts. And then it runs all the way up into the insertion point, which is where the muscle inserts into. Every muscle has its own set of origin and insertion points. You can see with this example, with the biceps brachii, you're gonna have two points of origin. You're gonna have the short head originating at the coracoid process, then the long head originating at the supraglenoid tubercle, and there's gonna be an insertion point at the radial tuberosity. The more that you study muscle anatomy, the more you're gonna notice that a lot of these origin and insertion points are on bony landmarks. So just knowing the basic skeletal system can help you out a lot. Another thing that can really help you is that usually during a muscle contraction or when a muscle moves, the origin point is a point that stays fixed. It does not move, while the insertion point is a point that moves. Meaning during a muscle contraction, the movement goes from the insertion point to the origin point. I know this might be really confusing and you might be like, Danny, what are you saying? But let me give you an example again using the biceps. This right here is my bicep brachii. We know from the last example that the bicep is going to have two origin points and those two origin points are gonna be the proximal tendons as well. As we move along distally, the insertion point is gonna be at the radial tuberosity. So here on the screen, you can see the origin and the insertion of the biceps brachii. Now look at what happens when I contract my bicep. As I flex, you can see the insertion point going towards the origin. And as I relax my bicep and go back to that starting position, the insertion point goes away from the origin. So during a contraction, the insertion point goes to the origin and when you're relaxing, it goes away from the origin. This can be applicable to any muscle that you study, not just the bicep. Now, what I encourage you to do when you're studying, I know it might be kind of weird, is to actually pinpoint on your body using your fingers the different origin and insertion points, contract your different muscles, move them around, and that way you actually have like a visual representation of what's going on and it can make learning all these origin and insertion points really easy. The next term, which is pretty self-explanatory, is a muscle's action. Action just means the type of movement the muscle is doing. And since the musculoskeletal system is a unit, many muscles have more than one action. For example, as we saw with the biceps brachii, its main action is flexion, but it also does supination. Another arm muscle is the triceps brachii, and its main action is extension. However, it also does do some slight adduction. Now specifically with the biceps and tricep, they have an agonist and antagonist relationship. The agonist, which in this case we'll use as the bicep, is the primary mover producing that action, which for the bicep is flexion. Now you can tell by the name, the antagonist is the muscle that does the opposite. So as you flex your arm, the primary mover or the agonist is gonna produce that main movement but then the antagonist is what's gonna relax or lengthen. Now the last term I'm gonna be explaining is innervation. As we all know at this point, muscles move. But what makes muscles move? 
nerves. To make it really simple, all innervation means is that it's the nerve that sends a signal to the muscle so that it can produce a contraction. Think of it this way, in order for your muscle to move, it needs something telling it to move. And that something is a signal from the nerve supplying it, and that's gonna be your innervation. So there you have it. I know that these terms can be really basic, but having the basic fundamentals goes a really long way, and it can also just really help you make things easier. Hopefully this video did help, and it cleared up what origin, insertion, action, and innervation really were. If you found this video useful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below to stay up to date with my uploads. That is pretty much it for me, but always, always remember to stay hydrated.